something about that just seemed really wrong to her. And so she went out looking for a different solution and thanked the angels and the universe for showing her that solution. And so what was beautiful about that to me was that she had such great awareness to realize that this so-called problem was actually a gift. And like when, if you guys remember the show I did a while back called The Gift of Pain, I feel that pain comes in to teach us, whether it's the pain of a loss of love and broken heart, like a love we lose and leaves and goes on. Maybe someone we love moves on and leaves the body. Maybe um, we throw out our back and we can't do anything for a while and it puts us right on our back so that we're in deep surrender and we're in a state of deep listening and meditation. And it's interesting how some of us, if we're in resistance to pain, which I feel our society is very much in a resistance of pain, we try to push the pain away. We want to numb it, distract it, put a bandaid on it, whatever it is, but get it away from me. And in truth, the gift is in it. If we lean into it, we inquire within, what is going on? How may I serve you? Back, what is happening inside of you? How can I help you feel better? We answer the call. Then that back pain is going to shift because we're going to have awareness of what's going on. If we ask a question, our soul putting out a question to the universe, a deep, honest opening to understanding, the universe will bring back a deep, wise truth. And I promise as each of you start to put out the questions and then listen, practice deep listening, this is where our society would benefit so much from a shift from busyness to stillness. Sometimes it's just so much more powerful to just be quiet and not be chattering and not be spinning in our story, but just lay down and close your eyes and feel the energy of aliveness in your fingertips. Feel your breath every day. Give honor for it. Like this is a gift that you are breathing. It is not a given. It is not something that you have been entitled to because of your status or any other thing in life. It is truly a gift. And if each of us tap into that gift and we listen and we allow consciousness to move through us, we will create beautiful lives. And maybe we touch three or four people deeply in our lifetime. Perfect. Be content with that. Be content with whatever it is that your soul's here to do. Just show up. You don't need to be known by everyone. You don't need everyone to approve of you. You don't need to have, you know, 20 books written and on the New York top seller best list to be worthy. If that happens, awesome. And go ahead and visualize that and put energy out there to dream and to expand yourself. But if the drive for that is coming from fearful ego of who am I without that status? Who am I unless I achieve this and then achieve that? And I've worked with some really amazing people who have achieved a lot, who when it comes all down to it at the end, when we sit and talk intimately together, they realize what a game it was and that all of it was not really what mattered to them. And some of them destroyed some of the most beautiful relationships in their lives because of their drive of their ego. And so I feel like if we can just balance that more and we can remember we're light, we're infinite, eternal beings that will never stop if we relax imagine how we connect more if i actually trusted that there is plenty of time that i am beautiful and useful enough that i am intelligent enough as i am that i am capable and confident in whatever needs to come out, come through me i can handle it i just relax there's a sense of <sighs> sigh of ease and in that ease is exactly where the magic happens. That is when everything flows in so much more simply in your life. Things just come together. Synchronicity starts to really flow. And you touch lives in such a deeper way with that presence than you ever could by just racing through trying to achieve something from hungry ego. So something to think about. Um, I will take a pause and see if anybody's writing in or anybody wants to call in. Here's your moment. Nobody, Anything coming no, in, Amnon? No, nobody's writing in, but <clears throat> I have a question. Okay. So you're talking about ask the universe. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm, and I always compare it to something when something like this, I'm comparing it to 
computers or to demand. So yes. right now, there's not that many people that follow this advice. Indeed. What happens Great awareness. <laughs> now? What happens if every person on Earth followed it? Would the universe have enough resources to actually pay attention to each person? Do you think? Absolutely, I do. Okay. Because if there's if there is the consciousness in each of us here with presence, if we have that presence, then each of us are going to have different desires, right? right. So we're all going to have different desires that we put out to the universe and the universe is infinite. And so as we tap into that infinite potential and power, when we each get that awareness, where we each arrive with that awareness, then we each self-realize. And as we self-realize, we will move with greater harmony and balance on a planet or wherever we are in the universe than we ever would have without that. And so when we move from a place of awareness and consciousness, we move with greater reverence to the whole. So if I'm moving from a state of awareness in my movie and there's 50 people who aren't, there might be 50 people over consuming, overtaking, mm -hmm. over talking, over, you know, crowding. But that one being of awareness is raising the vibration, honoring, showing up, holding space giving more. And so if each of us were in that kind of alignment, what would happen is a profound shift would change on this planet. And every human would move with greater awareness and reverence for each other. Kind of like, have you ever seen um, kind of ants when they move in a colony and they're just moving and they kind of have this orchestration and they pass each other mm -hmm. and it looks you know, from a distance, like kind of chaos, there's just ants everywhere. But when you watch them closely, they're really pretty honoring to each other and they will move. And if one drops something, the other just comes right behind and picks it up. And they create amazing colonies because of that organization. And in Japan, they have like in, J in Japan, I don't know if you've ever been there, but I've seen seen um, films in Japan and I've heard people that have visited there and they say it's very much like that in the energy of Japan there's more of a and not in every way but in a lot of ways there's more honor for consciousness and awareness and so the humans will move like that on the streets and they're just like flowing but they just have like an intuitive connection to the other humans near them kind of like the ants do like they're all sensing each other and they're all honoring each other in that space and that flow. And so I feel like as we moved into that consciousness as a planet of humans and we all chose that, we would have an amazing shift happen. And we would move with greater harmony and reverence. And it wouldn't be like, I honestly think the overconsumption that's happening, because I think some of the concern people have for, you know, would there be enough resources is the truth is I think there would be more than enough because we would all be cooperating in that system and we would be assisting in it rather than yep. what it is, is where some do very little work and very little effort, but they overtake from fear. So when we're in fear, we need to greedily hoard all the resources or hoard all the money or hoard all the, the food and if we're coming from a place of consciousness that understands that whatever I need is on its way, we don't need to hoard anything. We don't need to cling or attach to anything or anybody. We can love each other and we can, you know, love our house and the things we have. But if something shifts and that's taken, we don't identify with it as a sense of self. So that house is not me. It was a shelter for me. And if it's taken, I trust the universe has another plan for me. And then we create from that experience. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. How, how about you? What do you feel about that? Do you kind of have that same feeling? or? I, I, I mean, I would like to see everybody in this kind of alignment and in that kind of, uh, way, yeah, of too. way of thinking. But it's, I think it's wishful thinking. Well, and the wishful thinking is the most powerful thing you can use because when we're in a space of imagination, truly in the laws of attraction, your imagination is your most powerful tool. 
And so how you use your imagination is amazingly powerful opportunity. Yeah. So if we're using our imagination in fearful ways, like, oh, the world's going to end and it's all going to hell and end of times and the religion talked about this. We're using our imagination, but we're creating a dark experience from fear. Mm -hmm. If we go into imagination, wishful thinking in a different vibration of, I can imagine a time and a place where all humans honor each other, where they actually care about the need of the one near them, where they actually treat each other with honor, where they actually care about animals and they don't harm them, where we move with greater honor and reverence for the planet and we don't overtake from the resources. We actually make sure if we take that we can give back equally so that everything maintains balance. If we visualize that in our imagination, and maybe it's just me, you, and 50 other people doing it, it's still powerful. And if enough of us are doing it, and then like this internet show, I find this to be such a gift and a, and a jewel for humanity. And maybe there's 10 people listening today, or maybe there's a thousand. It isn't really that important. What it is, is important to know that we're speaking the messages and that those who are ready to hear will hear and that we just want to keep sharing the messages until enough people shift that we start tipping the scales in the favor of honoring the planet and honoring the bigger vision that we're holding. And really, it's not about a rush or trying to make it happen. It's really a slow, steady building of energy and vibration where we're holding that vibration of alignment. Like I was doing for a month before my wedding I was just visualizing a sunny day, visualizing a sunny day, not in fear or stress or worry, just completely like holding that space and, oh, it's going to feel so nice to walk on. It's going to be beautiful. And we're going to take our pictures. And I asked others, hey, if you get a time and you're in meditation, would you hold space with us? Could you visualize this with me? When, um, like the other day, I have, I'll have dreams a lot of times being so like Yoda, I'm connected to the the universe and I feel disturbances in the force and oftentimes I'll have dreams where it's like disaster dreams or some kind of natural disaster is happening in my dreams and I wake up and I just call forth the elements I send love and light to wherever the place is if I was given notice of where it is or I have an intuition I thank the angels and the universe for supporting whatever's shifting there and to protect as many lives as possible but then I also understand the energy of cleansing and clearing and that sometimes the planet has to clear energy. Sometimes the planet has to shake things off that are disrupting the vibration. Just like if we feel someone was overtaking from us, we may become more um, aggressive in our approach to get those in-laws out of our house or those kids that are living <laughs> here with our friends because they're over consuming our goods and they're over consuming the energy and they're destroying the environment. And so that's something we could relate to on a small scale in our family, but that happens on the planet. The planet can feel like there's um, energies overtaking from the earth and the earth will react with a, like a actual reaction internally and shake that energy off, if you will. And so like the other night I had a dream of this and I sent all that intention. I was calling in love and light and I just had a feeling there was going to be like an earthquake and I just called in support and thank the angels. I went on Facebook and just said, if you guys feel led, join me in meditation, let's hold space, whatever's going on. I can feel the earth churning and let's just send her healing and send light. And then the next day, Nepal had an earthquake. And so it doesn't mean that we failed at what we did, but I feel we were assisting. And who knows if the people that were tuning in and sending love and light and support wouldn't have done any of that, maybe 10,000 people would have died or maybe it'd be even worse than it was. And so it's not really judging things good or bad. It's just showing love whenever we can and holding a space of the highest, highest alignment always coming in. Does that make sense? No, nah, that makes sense. It's a fact. There you go. But that's what happened. And that literally was an experience that I just had. And so, you know, we can go into fear and we can worry about the world ending. And we have a lot of signs the earth is giving us that she is tired and over 
um, being overtaken from. And just like a mother, like if you've been around a mom that feels like she's being overtaken from and she's not 